how to choose the best wash mitt to detail your car. I'm Ivan. And I'm Nick. And this is the DIY Detail Podcast. Now, Nick is calling them wash mitts, but not everything we have here is a wash mitt. A lot of people call it wash media. So Ivan it's... wanted to get technical. I wanted to be the man of the people. There so we go. here we are. We're meeting the meeting of minds. Yeah. So let's start with one we don't sell. And that is the chenille wash mitt. Now, this came in a recent Amazon purchase. They just happened to include this in the package. We didn't order it. Uh, it just came with the other item we were ordering. Chenille wash mitts have been around for a while. They look interesting, but they have some downfalls. The major downfall that they have is pressure points. So if you put your hand inside this wash mitt, and you can hear that this is a cheap one. It's got sort of a plastic liner to it. Uh, basically, if you put pressure on this, you can also feel every one of these points putting pressure on your paint. Pressure on your paint is not a good thing. So the chenille wash mitt, and this one, we can actually see you know, the space between each row. So there are some that are really dense. There are some companies that make a good chenille wash mitt. They're few and far between. And the other issue with chenille wash mitts is their durability. So these eventually pull out, and then you lose one, you lose another, you lose another. Again, more pressure points, more areas. So even the high quality ones, they don't have the durability of the next ones in line. Yeah, I like to think about that pressure points line you just said. Yeah. And that's how I tell myself, just make a nice, no pressure wash on the paint. You do not want to grind in, you want to let the soap right. and your wash media do the job for you. Exactly. And so we can talk about some other wash mitts or we can get right to the sponge. Maybe we'll start with this and then we'll get to the sponge. Yeah. And that belongs on the floor uh, from whence it came. This is our Cotton Candy Dream wash mitt. Now it looks pretty small. It looks thinner than the chenille. Right. But it's sturdy and it's kind of like a wash pad. Right. We were talking about that earlier. Um, and you can see the lining here is thicker as well. So you're not, well, you're not going to hold it like this, but you're not going to be getting as much pressure variation because right. it kind of, it's a solid base for you. Yeah, and the, uh, you know, the cotton candy wash mitt here, super soft as well. And with soap, it just glides across the paint. It's slick. Really, yeah, it's slick is the right term. It just glides by itself. We also have, and you can see it here, there's a little line here. Well, that allows you that when you do put your hand in it, you can actually hold onto it with your fingers. So you can curve it, you can hold onto it, so it's not gonna slide off when you're pulling it out of the bucket. The other thing is, like Nick mentioned, you can use it simply as a wash pad. So That's my preferred way, but a lot of people like to put their hand in the wash mitt and do this. Exactly, thing. so cotton candy, great product. With wash mitts, we have another one here. So this one's actually even thicker than this, and we have a dual density type of microfiber on here. So we have what looks like silk fibers, and then we have the twist loop fiber in the, in the mix. So again, it has the line in the center, it's got the, the thick padding, the nice lining. So very good wash mitt. Uh, really, these two, it comes down to personal preference. I was gonna say, you like this one better than the Cotton Candy Dream. Depends. I like this one better with incredible suds, but I prefer this one with rinseless. Interesting. So, yeah, it, that's just the feel and how it goes. They're both great products. They both work well. They both do what they're supposed to do. I like this one for both. Yeah. So I thought to have this one in the Black Friday Nick kit. Yeah. So actually Incredible Suds does come with this and this comes in your rinseless kit. Yeah. But that's because I was kind of a punk about it and I was like, I want the cotton candy because I wanted to beat Ivan in the competition and the Incredible Suds had the purple and the purple was yeah, on this. Exactly. I'm like, let's get it matching. So uh, you really can't go wrong. It's very personal preference. People have asked me, which mitt's better? I'm like. Honestly, man, just play around with it, right? Like, we like to do what we like to do as detailers. So find what you like, find your, find your zen, and just go with it. Yeah. Next one, because we're saving the best for last, is just a heavy, plush microfiber towel. You don't want a Kirkland Costco small towel. If you're gonna use a towel, make it plush. Right, so you want a nice, thick, plush towel, very soft, but the reason for the thickness, again, is pressure points. If you have, just one layer of towel, now I've got pressure points where my fingers are. Now that's okay on windows. Oh, like if, yeah. Like if you're trying to get into a corner of a window, whatever that is, yeah. you can get in there with your finger and kind of get that dirt and grease or whatever, the dirt, after you've washed the car and you're just trying to dial it all in. Oh, or definitely. as you're washing it, but not on paint, man. You want the alleviation of 
a whoopsie, right? Yeah, exactly. And a lot of people with their rinseless wash, this is what they prefer, it's what they use. Great, it's fun. If it's what you want to use, by all means, this is safe. A nice, thick, heavy, soft, high GSM microfiber towel. You really can't go wrong anywhere in the ballpark of what we're saying. So if it's from us, if it's somewhere else, there are just so many options out there for like, I'm putting myself in the shoes of someone who just started detailing, like, what do I use to wash my car? It would be a pretty ominous thing of like, yeah. I don't even know where to start. Right. And we like to like, maybe a little bit about DIY detail. Because there are so many products out there, we kind of think, hey, we came up with a great lineup. These are pro-grade products. You designed this sponge. We're going to get to that in a second. Yep. We hope you trust the source. We hope you find value in it and would want to support us because that helps us continue to do this. Uh, we have a lot of integrity. We, we love teaching and we love this stuff. So if you like what we're saying, if you value the source uh, and you'd be willing to buy from us, obviously that would be good for us because right. we're running a company. So yeah. anyway, that's what I got to say. Let's talk about your sponge. So the sponge started roughly about 18 years ago. Uh, rinseless wash was coming into its own and people were using grout sponges. For They're, what? For rinseless washing. That was the, the popular thing because the first rinseless washes on the market, wool wash mitts were a thing. They still are. You can still get wool wash mitts. But if you put a wool wash mitt into a rinseless wash, it felt like a slimy mess. It just okay. wasn't a fun situation. There were sponges available for car washing. Again, not the greatest of technologies, not the greatest of foams. They just used whatever foam they had, cut it into a shape and called it a wash sponge. So some people experimented, they tried a grout sponge. Now the grout sponge was great, they're cheap. You could buy them at the big box home improvement stores for $2.99. They lasted maybe five or 10 washes and then they start disintegrating. So myself, running a number of shops, I wanted to find a better solution because, again, we were using rinseless wash in our shops and what was out there just wasn't doing it for us. And, you know, the latest technology at the time was the chenille mitt. So we've come a long way uh, in the last 15 years or so. So I called my favorite polishing foam manufacturer, and that's Lake Country Manufacturing, and said, what do you guys have to offer? Well, they sent me about 60 samples of foam. And Did they, they said, really? Yeah. They said, you try it. We how don't do have the time. Sift, how do you sift through 60 samples? You'd be surprised. Some of them eliminated themselves rather quickly. And some of them took a long time. You know, luckily we were washing hundreds of cars a day. So it was very easy to determine that this sponge, no, gone, finished. You know, use it on half a panel and decide, eh, eh no good. But the sponge or the foam at the time that was the best in terms of, there's always a compromise, but in terms of softness, durability, ease of cleaning, and uh, safety for the paint was a red foam. And I came up with what was called the big red sponge. In the beginning, it was just meant for my shops. So I didn't name it. It just, people called it the big red sponge. Eventually I started selling it to others and it became a popular thing. So the Big Red Sponge was the first really designed for rinseless wash sponge. The caveat or the, the bad part about the, fo the red foam that is used in the Big Red Sponge is that it really doesn't like soap. What does that mean? I mean, you'd figure it could work with soap. It can work with soap, but it, again, like that wool wash mitt, feels like a greasy, slimy mess. If you're using it with rinseless, it's gonna last you for thousands of washes it's gonna do a great job, but the second you put it into soap, you're gonna realize that you made a mistake. So from there, worked with Lake Country again. One of the ones I had tested during that time was a gold colored foam. And the reason it got put aside was simply its price point. Great foam, but the price point of it was a little higher. So I wanted to keep it economical. I was in my own shops, so you know, I wanted to save money for myself. But the gold foam did a good job. And eventually the foam, uh, the gold ones got introduced, or the big gold sponge got introduced as a premium version of the red sponge. And still around, you can still get it. Same thing with the big red sponge, still around, you can still get it. Then foam technology evolves over all these years. So 15 years later, here, or 13 years later, 
I'm trying another foam, and that is the black foam. And it's actually charcoal one color. But this foam had a lot of things going for it compared to the original red foam. And one of the things going for it was its ability to be used with soap. So develop that sponge and also change the shape at that time because the original big red sponge was just a big five by seven square. The ergonomics were not the best on it, but that is the mold that the Lake Country Manufacturing had and I didn't want to invest in another mold, so we went for it and it became what it became. So we came out with the ultra black sponge. Great sponge, works with rinseless and soap, everything else. When we started developing the DIY line, of course I wanted a sponge for us. And went back into the big bin of foam, and of course foam has evolved again, and was able to get basically the same foam in two different colors. And so we have the same density and the same thickness of foam. This red foam works with soap. So we use it with incredible suds, we use it with rinseless wash, whichever way we want to. The reason I wanted to go to a two color system, and I could have gone black and gold, but that's not our company colors. We're black and red, baby. Exactly. So we went with the black and red. And one of the main reasons for two colors is some people had a complaint on this color, saying that they can't see the dirt on it. And in reality, you can. It's charcoal. A lot of people saying you can't see the dirt probably have never picked one up in their hands and tried it, because you can see the dirt on it. The red side, you can definitely see the dirt. So from there, we now have two sides. And the two sides was identified by us, but identified by some other people as well that started using it that it's great because now I have a mental tracking of what I've done, where I've been. So a lot of people will start with one color on the top of the panel. When they get to a certain point, they'll flip it over to the other side and they know that if they have this side in their hand, that it's time to dunk it back in the bucket. Honestly, it's so simple, but it, it's really effective. Right, so this to me, is our ultimate wash medium. Now, Nick, I know this is his favorite. I mean, if I'm doing an Incredible Suds foam can and wash, I, I love it. Yeah, this is an exceptionally soft. I've never felt a wash mitt that's this soft. Exactly. But I love the big red sponge combo with the ultra black. And yeah. We called it the legacy sponge because it's your legacy, it right? Is. Like, a little bit, yeah. I mean, you know, you've been doing this a long time. You're known as a efficiency guy, but also as kind of the well, you wouldn't call yourself this, but you know, like the guru of rinseless washing, and I mean, you came up with these sponges that are being used by thousands of detailers all over the world. So yes, yeah, I mean, it's kind of your legacy, and so exactly. yeah, we call it the legacy sponge. I had no uh, work in naming that. That was all Nick. So uh, yeah, that was not Ivan. It's too humble to do that. But yeah, it's it's what to me it made sense, right? And it's yeah. sort of a you know testament to to your involvement in the industry. I really love this for rinseless washing myself. I actually like having two. Yeah. I mean, you dump one in the bucket, and then you grab the other one, and you wash, 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 and by the time you get back, it's already clean. Like, how, you know the chemistry better than I do. I know how it all works, but you can explain it. Why is just dunking it in the bucket, not even hitting it with the grit guard at the bottom, cleaning this, so by the time I get back, it's already ready to go again? Well, that is a function of, A, the foam itself. So the foam, Basically, we always tell you when you're using the rinseless wash, and the same thing with Incredible Suds when you're using this, to not take it soaking wet and put it on the vehicle. If it's too wet, it actually won't do its job. So the foam, what does foam want to do? It wants to absorb, it wants to hold. What we're doing is the foam, just by one squeeze, you have it on the verge of dripping, it's nice and humid, it's damp, now we can wash. And <clears throat> it's leaving more rinseless wash on the surface, and one other important thing that I haven't talked, all of these sponges, same idea, the thickness means no pressure points, more safety. Yeah, we didn't quite mention that. We yeah. talked about these, but the, the real genius of this that anyone could understand, you yeah. can even talk to your customer if you're a pro detailer, is like, just put this in your hand, and I'm gonna tell you not to use any pressure, and look how much redundancy is built in <laughs> yeah. to not do this on your paint, right? Right, but anyways, so we have a few things. For the larger chunks, it's the fingers that are going to allow them to go in there. For the smaller, by not having this too wet, it's actually absorbing that dirt into the sponge. And you see it, when you pull it off the car, this surface will be black. And you literally just touch it to the top of the rinseless wash, lift it up, and it's clean again. That's because now the excess amount of water, by putting it in there, 
has basically flooded the sponge and when you lift it off, it releases that dirt because now the sponge has too much liquid in it. Instead of wanting to absorb, it wants to release. Honestly, no tool, no product, no wash media is going to make you wash your car safely. It has to be some combination where you meet up technique with technology. But you gotta take these steps. You gotta listen to us about yeah. pre-treat the panel first, hopefully if you can do this, and rinse it off with a hose. Get most stuff off your paint before you touch it with any of these, and you're gonna be in a much safer position. You know, you re-dunk from time to time if you're gonna get a lot of dirt or big particles of gunk on your wash, but you wanna dunk it in water. I mean, there's yeah. various ways to do this. We're gonna put a tips on how to detail like a pro up here. There's so much to learn, but it's like not intimidating. It's fun, you know? It's just, yeah. But this is a foundational part of washing your car, and I think right. we had a, a pretty good discussion about it. Exactly, and one other thing, he mentioned it, he glazed over it, is the grit guard. In your bucket, whether you're washing with soap, whether you're washing with water, you need some form of dirt barrier. So whether it be a grit guard, whether it be a dirt lock, whatever, there's a, a number of different brands out there, they all do the same thing. They allow you a space between the bottom of the bucket and your wash media that you can't go down and get that gunk in the bottom. Yeah, there's little, what, cross sections where right. you rub the wash mitt against it and the dirt falls to the bottom, hypothetically. Yeah, exactly. And it's not gonna come back up. Exactly. So you're just kind of building in redundancy to be safer as you wash your car. And they're inexpensive. They'll, you know, if you take care of them, they'll last you a lifetime. So there's no need to not have one. Honestly, if you take care of this, I mean, there are people out there who've told you how many washes they've gotten out of your sponges over the years. Uh, yeah. What's the most you've heard? Uh, thousands, literally Seriously. thousands. Yeah. Uh, in my shop, we would replace the sponges once a year, whether they needed it or not. It was just a you know, rotational maintenance thing. But there are days where we washed 100 cars. I still have my big red sponge from five years ago. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean, it's just, these things will last you forever. And so that's what it's all about with DIY Detail as well. Quality products, pro grade, but they're so easy to use. And that is the genius of it all. Ivan, thank you for this discussion. Thank you. And if you like these discussions, give us a thumbs up. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell.